Hi everyone, I am Fred Tiedemann. Um, I am the author of the 101 Most Used Verbs in Spoken Arabic, Jordan and Palestine, and this I'm holding is the third edition. Um, today I want to talk to you a little bit about uh, just giving an intro to the book itself, what it is, what's, uh, what the contents of it, the sections that you can find in this book. Um, uh, the 101 Most Used Verbs was originally published in 2005. And that was the first edition. And then we had a second edition a few years later. And then just now in 2015 uh, that we're recording this, this has been released as of just a month ago. So uh, the book is available First off, let me tell you, it's available um, here in Jordan at uh, any, uh, well, basically the major bookstores like Books at Cafe, um, The Good Bookshop, Jordan Bookstore, University Bookstore, um, Wa'al Bookstore, and uh, a couple language schools as well, including CG Jordan, where you can get it at a discounted price of 20 US dollars. I mean, excuse me, no, it's about 28 US dollars. It comes out 20 JD. Dinar. Anyway, the book comes with, um, in addition to the book itself, comes with a CD. Uh, this is an MP3 CD, and it has about 11 to 12 hours of audio, crisp audio, MP3 audio, um, and virtually the entire book is on the CD. Um, so it's a really good thing for students who want to listen to it on their MP3 player while, uh, while they're on the go or whatever they're doing. So, anyway, the book itself. There are basically five sections, you can say, general sections to the book. And for those of you who know about spoken dialects, you know, you follow resources, you know that there are really, there's no other book like this out there. And that's the reason why I wrote it. Uh, it took me many years to write it. This book is solely, has been solely written for the purpose to help you get the dialect. And it looks at frequency, the one-on-one -on -one most used verbs, um, they, the idea behind these verbs is that when you, when you look at Arabs in, in Levant, specifically in Palestine and Jordan, what do they do? Uh, what verbs they use? About 65% or more of the verbs they use, high frequency, the top 100, uh, um, well, the top verbs that they use, about 70 um, percent of what they're using is right here. So if you went and counted all the verbs an Arab would use on a daily basis, and then you did a frequency, you would find, frequency list, you would find that these 101 encompass basically the majority of what Arabs are using. So this is totally practical stuff that you're going to hear every single one of these verbs you're going to hear daily basis. Okay. So the first section is a section, and I think we're going to put it up on the screen for you, but the first section is the introduction. And it's just a short introduction for the, um, uh, for the Arabic language in general, the spoken language, uh, specifically the ten forms, um, and the whole system that comes out of the ten forms. The ten forms are the center of the Arabic language. Uh, the verb is the center of the Arabic language. Everything, adjectives, adverbs, um, uh, nouns, um, gerunds, all of this flows out from the ten forms, and including the verbs. All right. So the ten verb forms, I tell people it's kind of like a chest of drawers, if you will. You know, we put all of our clothing in chest of drawers, just about. Uh, and in chest of drawers, you're going to have, let's say, ten different drawers. Okay. Well, what the Arabs have done in a mathematical way is that they've taken these drawers and they use them for certain verbs. And all the verbs rotate around a three-letter root system or a four-letter root system. There are no verbs aside from verbs found in three or four-letter roots. Okay, And the three-letter roots really encompass more than 90-some-odd percent of all verbs. So... The, um, these cover the whole gambit of the three, and there's a one or two four-letter word um, roots in here. So the second, that's the introduction. The second uh, section is one, the, the, the meat of the book, the meat, the content of uh, the, the major content is the sentences, the verbs themselves. What I do is I take the verbs, I list them out, 
I tell you if they are um, spoken, only used in spoken, or if they are used uh, both in spoken or uh, spoken and in written, which you'll be surprised and amazed at how many of them are only used in spoken. That is, in other words, you cannot get this material anywhere in any textbook because most textbooks aren't focused on um, spoken. They're focused on the MSA. <clears throat> so I have more than 800 um, sample practical sentences, each definition from the verb, which these verbs, the reason why they're so highly, they're, they're so highly used is because they carry multiple definitions with each verb, just as we have in English. Um, we have verbs, uh, you know, like go, which is one of the most used verbs in English. Um, we have so many, if you think about it, we have so many definitions uh, and, and situations that we can use that then change the definition and the meaning just by putting on a preposition or an adverbal phrase or something as such. Anyway, so that is about 800 sentences there. And then, and all those are on the CD, the next section, the third section, is a extremely important section as well, and that is the verb inflection charts, uh, the verb inflection charts. And give you an example uh, of the charts. This is a Form 5 uh, page here. And you can see that the charts are li list out here in the inflection um, how you inflect the verbs on any given chart, uh, any given, we call it wasn in Arabic, um, which it means form. Any form or subform is listed in this book. I, I don't think that you would be able to find a form that's not in this book. It's, it's exhaustive. So, and not only that, um, I list underneath this particular chart, there's one verb that's, uh, that's inflected out in the chart. And then if you go down below the chart, I've listed up to, um, uh, I think it's around 15, 16, yes, up to 16 verbs from this particular sub, uh, sub form um, or form. So, this adds up to 700 additional verbs in the book, 700. So you really, what you have is a book of not one-on-one, -on -one, but you've got one with uh, over 800 verbs in it. The next section is, is a, um, there are actually a couple minor sections. Like, uh, for example, part of the, uh, yeah, another section here would be the broken plural section. Uh, but even in the inflection charts, I, can, I have this page here, which is useful for students. If you watch my videos, uh, watch C.G. Jordan videos, you'll see that we use these for inflecting verbs, and we put it in the book to help you. Um, as well as that, there's a, the, the fourth section is the broken plural section. Um, now, this doesn't really have a lot to do with the verbs, but I added it in. And there's over, uh, over 700 um, to 800 broken plurals here listed out with precise definitions. And the reason why I did this is because um, I know students, um, there have, there's a lack of material out there for students for broken plurals. Unfortunately in Arabic, unlike Hebrew or, other, or any other Semitic language, Arabic is special in that it has majority of the verbs are gonna be broken, I mean, nouns are gonna be broken plural nouns. Kinda like man, men the internals of the word change. And so that's uh, a section there with a lot of good stuff. The last section that we have is going to be two indexes. One, an English to Arabic index for the broken plurals. Um, so you can look it up by the English. And then another one is the English to Arabic um, um, uh, index for verbs. So all of the 101 and any definitions of those 800, more than 800 definitions, are going to be found. You can look them up by the English, okay, and then find it. So that, hopefully that was a helpful little introduction to the 101 Moshe's Verbs. This book is 344 pages. It's uh, quite a large book. The text in the Arabic is appropriately slightly enlarged so that uh, for the ease of, the, of a second language reader. And it's only in Arabic. There are no transliteration, uh, transliterations in this book, which I'm happy to say. 
And the reason behind that, some students ask me, why do you have that that way? You know, why, why don't you put translation, transliteration in? Well, the idea behind transliteration um, is to help people in the beginning. But the, the, the issue with transliteration is that the question we have is why do it when you can easily learn the Arabic alphabet within just uh, two to three weeks? So and we, we, we even had a 70-year-old man come here to CG Jordan and learn the Arabic alphabet in five days, five days. So why do transliteration when there's so much value uh, from learning the Arabic alphabet that you get in memory acquisition, also with pronunciation um, that you cannot get from transliteration? So we encourage students to go ahead and bite the bullet, so to speak, get the Arabic alphabet, buy the book, the book, what level is it for? It's for beginner all the way to superior level students, um, advanced, above advanced. Um, the question is, though, how much can you use the book as a beginner? Well, you're going to have things that you can use in the book, but the whole book will not really open up to a student until they're at about an intermediate mid-level. So for those of you who might want to know, any of you um, instructors of Arabic or professors, so that's it, and I hope you enjoy the book. The book is available on Amazon.com. Um, if you're in Europe or the U.S., you can buy it. Um, UK, Amazon.com, or USA, Amazon.com. Pick it up and tell me what you think. If you like it, review it. If you don't, tell me why you don't like it. But I haven't had a student tell me yet that they don't like the book, so I hope you enjoy it. Thanks a lot.